Hello everyone, welcome to the video series of Nucleo 64 ARM controller. As you guys already know, in today's video, we are going to discuss not only the code, but also the hardware aspects of GPIOs. We will dig into the datasheet of microcontroller and understand how exactly general purpose input output pin works, what are the different GPIO functional modes available and inside architecture of GPIO port. In later part, we will see how to write code to blink LED and upload the binary on controller. If you are only looking for the code, then I would recommend to skip the first part of this video and jump to the software section. But I would recommend everyone to understand the hardware aspects of GPIO pin as this section of video is not just specific to STM32 controller. This logic is implemented in almost every microcontroller and as a programmer, we should know exactly how is our C code manipulates these GPIO pins. So let's start our video by diving into the datasheet of STM32 G0 ARM controller. To get all technical documents, go to STM32 website and look for specific controller you are using. In our case, STM32 G070RB. Then we will open datasheet and go to GPIO section. But we can't see any technical details over here. After having some closer look, you will see that they have recommended to check the reference manual for more details. So let's go to STM32 website again and download reference manual. Yeah, this document looks promising regarding technical details. Now let's search for GPIO and go to GPIO section. So each GPIO pin can be configured as input or analog or output or alternate function. Now let us understand these modes in details. This is the basic structure of GPIO pin inside STM32 microcontroller. Here we can see input driver and output driver which drives the pin in these modes. Now if we want to read digital data from external world, we configure the GPIO pin as input. This diagram represents input configuration. As you can see, output driver is disabled and thus output data register as well. TTS mid trigger is used to filter out the noise from input signal, which is sampled at every advanced high performance bus clock cycle. This signal is then saved in input data register, which we can access in our code to get the digital representation of input signal. This input mode can be either in floating state or pull up or pull down state. In pull up state, the GPIO pin is internally pulled up, that is internal pull up register is activated. Similarly, depending upon the requirement, pull down register can also be used. In floating mode, neither pull up nor pull down registers are used. These registers are activated depending upon the value in the register GPIO PUPDR, that is pull up pull down register. In case of output mode, the output driver is turned on. This can work as open drain mode or push pull mode. In open drain mode, a zero in the output register activates the NMOS, whereas one in the output register leaves the port in high impedance that is floating state. So at the output, we get either ground or floating state. This mode is generally used with external pull up register. For example, in I2C communication or whenever we need to connect multiple GPIO pins. In push-pull mode, a zero in the output register activates the NMOS, whereas one in the output register activates the PMOS. So at the output, we get either VCC or a ground. In alternate mode, the device IO pins are connected to onboard peripherals modules through a multiplexer that allows only one peripheral alternate function connected to an IO port at a time. Each IO pin has a multiplexer with up to 8 alternate functions from AF0 to AF7 that can be configured through GPIO AFRL and GPIO AFRH register. Alternate functions can be as I2C SCL or SDA pin, USART TX, RX pin, SPI, MISO, MOSI, CLOCK, DATA pin or even timer channel input as well. In case of analog input output mode, both input and output drivers are disabled. Along with that, pull up and pull down registers are also disabled. 
and then this pin is connected to internal ADC for sampling and conversion of data. To control all of these functionalities, there are almost 11 registers available for each port. More details can be found in GPIO register section. This covers basics of hardware design of GPIO modes. If you guys want more detailed explanation, then do write it in a comment section, so I can make separate video on it. Now let's go to software section and see how these registers are used to blink LED. Now we will see how to create an empty project for STM32 microcontrollers. Even if we want to write code for a blinking LED, there are lot of things that should be taken care of, which can be done manually. But if you want to do projects in which you want to use USART, I2C, SPI or DMA, but then writing it from scratch is really difficult. You need to take care of all of the initialization and input configuration and all and all. But fortunately, we have a solution for this. That is STM32 CubeMX tool. Initially, I faced some issue with this tool on my Windows 8 system. So I opened the properties and changed the compatibility to Windows 7. So this is the main window of STM32 CubeMX, which we downloaded in last video. Now click on File, New Project, select Core as ARM Cortex M0 Plus, select Series as STM32G0. Then you can select Nucleo64 Board. You can get all basic information on this page. Now click on Start Project. This is the place where you can configure all of the parameters like ADCs, timers, I2C, SPI, USART and even a free RTOS. You can also change the clock configuration in clock configuration tab. Project manager tab is for changing global settings like tool chain compatibility, code generation settings and all. Now go to pinout and click on clear all pinout to remove all default configuration. Now we want to blink onboard green LED. If you check the schematic, you can see green LED is connected to pin PA5 that is GPIO port A pin number 5. So let's change PA5 to GPIO output. Then go to project manager and give some name to your project. Then select toolchain IDE as per your setup. I will select MDK ARM V5 and click on generate code. Here, CubeMX software is actually generating all initialization code for us. Once done, click on Open Project. And you can see our project open in Keel version 5 tool. Go to application slash user folder. Here we have our main.c file. If you scroll down and see int main function, all of the initialization configuration is already taken care. Then there is a while one loop in which we can write our own code. Now go to functions tab, open halgpio.c file. Here you can see all of the available functions which you can directly call from main. We will use this hal underscore gpio underscore toggle pin function. Copy this to your main function. Now write port as gpio a and gpio pin 5. Now we need to add some delay function. For that, go to hal.c file. You can see hal underscore delay function which provides delay in milliseconds. Use this function to provide delay in blinking lights. And that's it. See how easy it is to write code using CubeMX software. Now click on save and build. Sometimes you might get an error saying could not load .axf file. In this case, Select your project and go to project tab and click on rebuild all target. Then click on debug icon to upload the binary file on board and debug our code. In debug window, click on run to see our, our blinking lights. You can also use step function to debug our code just like other IDEs. With this, we have successfully created our first project and uploaded a binary on board. In next video, we will see the architecture of onboard ADC and use it in another sample project. Till then, take care. I'm your host Varakul Karani, signing off.